Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Shelby and welcome back to Seeds to Garden. So, per our first video here, I promised you the good and the bad and the ugly, so today's story is a little upsetting, but it is not it is life and that's life here on the farm, so I wanted to share it with you guys. So, we did have an incident about a week ago. Uh, we were taking out the trash and we heard some commotion late at night in our chicken coop. So we came down to check and we did indeed have a mink who had managed to get himself into the coop. And if you don't know anything about mink, they kind of look like a weasel. They are carnivores and they do enjoy chicken. So with that being said, we did lose three of our hens last week. And we had one that was injured. She is doing well, so I will show you her in just a few minutes with an update. But I wanted to bring you guys in and just kind of show you the chickens that we have remaining. We have about four chickens left. You know, it is very sad when something does injure your animals, but you always have to look at it through a bright side of they were older hens, they weren't laying as well and um, now we can get some new laying hens in there as well. So I did increase my chicken order for layers this season. I was able to add to my order. So we're just gonna get that many more new chickens. So a sad thing, but we can get a good result out of it. One of our chickens is actually outside. This is Miss Buffy. She is a Buff Orpington. I'm just going to bring you into this coop here so you guys can see what we have going on in here. Basically, Mr. Mink was hanging out in our nest boxes when my husband found him. We did manage to dispose of him, so luckily we shouldn't have any return pest problems. We have three other chickens that are not in the coop. Um, they have been managing to break out and I think it might be because of the stress of it all. They're not really sure what um, happened that night. Well, another part of farm life. I don't know where my chickens are. They must have got out again. So I'll have to go look for them. Stay tuned. I found them. They were out front. Now the fun part comes where we have to catch them. So I'm just going to set you up here to watch this probably funny scenario occur. So I thought that was going to be way worse than it was. I did manage to get all three chickens back in. Luckily they thought that they were going to be fed so they kind of went right into the door. And that's one of the perks if you are having your own chickens. We used to just have a 
an automatic feeder basically you filled the top of it and it was a big piping and they could just eat basically all day but when we started having pest problems rat problems we started worrying that maybe we were attracting them into the coop so we got rid of that and we started feeding them once a day physically going out there and feeding them and that is the one perk to doing that is that these chickens are pretty well trained that if they see us they head straight for the coop uh, our first flock that we had actually was trained through mealworms we would shake the bag of mealworms and they would follow us so i highly recommend doing something like that definitely buy yourself one of those fishing nets because they're great if you have a, a fearful bird such as my black orpington or sorry my black australorp uh, she is four years old oldest chicken we have been here the longest noticed the longest but he, she is terrified of everything we have never been able to really handle that chicken unless she is completely asleep um, we do have nicer hens that are more social uh, unfortunately the mink did take out a good chunk of them so what we're left with are a lot of the fearful ones which might be why they survived um, but yeah all jokes aside I highly recommend making sure that you have some way of getting your chickens to follow you back into the coop so you're not looking like a crazy person running around your yard trying to catch them. So yeah. Uh, you will see that I walked around and that was just to make sure that our perimeter was pretty secure. And I did notice that the one side of the fencing was leaned over so I have a feeling that's how they were getting out. So I did adjust that. Um, I don't know if they're just flying over it. Sometimes chickens will do that if they're really scared. They'll fly over the coop. But it takes a lot for a chicken, especially a layer chicken that's not exactly on the light side, to take flight. So if you have one of your, one of those smaller breed chickens, they're more likely to take flight. But we have big, robust layers. So usually they have to really want it or it has to be easy access. So my hope is that by changing that siding I think that that will prevent them from getting out again because when they get out they go into my garden beds and they rip them all up so my strawberry patch has already had two issues with that so hopefully this keeps them in but they might just have a little PTSD from last week so I can't really blame them I will take you in now and I'll show you the Brahma that was attacked um, but is doing well in her little recovery pen. So let's go check her out. Okay, so we're in the garage. This is the Brahma that was attacked that night and we found her outside the coop and she was just a little shocky, not really sure what was going on. Um, she was walking and everything, but she had some punctures on the back of her neck. So we brought her in cleaned her up, gave her some penicillin and some water, some apple cider vinegar, and just kind of secluded her so that she would be forced to take a rest. Um, also, if you don't know anything about laying hens, um, when you give them an antibiotic, you want to have at least a two week period where you're not consuming their eggs because they can pass that antibiotic on through their eggs. So she is already a week done and we have one more week to go so this weekend as long as she's still doing as well as she's doing now she will be able to go back outside so here is our little barama poor dear she looks like she just woke up from a nap <laughs> but we gave her some good bedding and some food and water and she i think she's really enjoying the quiet time so She'll stay in here, for, like I said, for another week, but she looks good. She's not as shocky as she was. I don't see any infection, so we're just going to put her back out with the flock. You know, unfortunately, these things happen on the farm, and it's part of the cycle of life and death. And unfortunately for those chickens, they weren't very lucky. Um, but we did take care of the pest. We made sure that there was no more chance of any of our other chickens to be harmed. And that just means that we get some new layers this coming year. So, a good situation out of a bad. So the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about before I sign off is that the next stages of our garden planning season are upon us. We just went through the shed. We got all of the seed starting stuff. We set up our plant shelf. So this will be things like brassicas, um, 
tomatoes, peppers, things that have a very long germination period or can withstand the cold. Those are usually what we're planting right now. So I'm going to have a whole another video on seed planting and what to start and when to start it. And I am currently working on our garden plan as we speak. So we have all the seeds out, seed boxes, garden plan is in the works, but I just wanted to let you guys know this makes me excited and ready for spring. Stay tuned for the next video. We are going to be starting some seedlings. Super excited. And until next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.